Hello, uh, in this lecture on VLSI design, we'll be learning about uh, different transistors, uh, uh, especially MOSFETs that will be used as switch in case of CMOS technology. And we'll be learning about the current equations and just the basic of it, basic operations of it. Before we move on to learn about MOSFETs, we have to learn about lattice. And uh, since we know that VLSI industry is also called semiconductor industry, because every chip is built built on a semiconductor substrate and, and the most uh, most popular substrate for our use is silicon substrate why do we silicon substrate we have learned in our chemistry in our intermediate level chemistry that the silicon has a property called catenation that is it can form bonds with itself and as a result it can form large polymers or large chains because of this catenation property silicon is Suita suitable for uh, suitable as a substrate or for making device another thing is that this catenation property is also shown by different other elements for example you find you can find this in germanium and some other devices but silicon processes uh, uh, another advantage which is this is very easily available in nature silicon is uh, the second most abundant element in the world and the second thing is price of silicon since available is the availability is easy the prices of silicon is very low as a result silicon is our first choice when we discuss about semiconductor industry it's a group 4 metal uh, group 4 material and it forms crystal lattice with four neighboring silicon atoms now silicon itself is an it works as a uh, works uh, as we know silicon is a semiconductor that is it's between the uh, conductors and insulators and at room temperature silicon acts as in insulators at very high temperature silicon can act as conductor that is they can conduct electricity but we do not want high temperature for operation so we what we do is we try to change the silicon lattice in such a way that it conducts electricity easily and we can by in one way or the other stop the conduction of electricity through it we do this by introducing dopants or impurities. There are two types of dopants, the N-type and the P-type. The N-type of dopant gives extra electron and the P-type of dopant creates a place for missing electrons where electrons from different elements can come to this missing spot. We have learned about dopants and doping in our device course in CSE 251 or AAA 205. We will just see the group 5 elements for example <clears throat> group 5 elements are for example nitrogen are called uh, are called n type dopants and for example in this case uh, again group 3 elements for uh, are called p type dopants so here we can see that in case of n type dopants uh, since it is a group 5 elements the outer shell of this has 5 electrons it shares 4 electrons with 4 silicon as a result it has one more electron left and because of it there is a negative charge developed that is actually not a negative charge this is still electrically neutral since all these silicons and this is also electrically neutral but there is an excess electron which is not bonded with anything this electron with the application of electric field can be moved to different places it can be moved across the lattice as a result since the movement of this electron will create current and this is called n type doped region. In case of group 3 element, uh, the it has 3 valence electrons. 3 valence electrons are bonded with 3 silicon. As a result, this cannot bond with this, elect uh, this silicon because it has 1 electron less. As a result, though it is at that stage, the, this silic these silicons over here and the boron all are chargeless. So, uh, as a result, this P type is electrically neutral. But there is a hole or there is a place where electron from outside can come and fill up that place. And if electron from here comes to this place, here we will find another hole, electron from a different place, so it can come here. As a result, the movement of holes create a current in this case and this is called a P-type uh, P type semiconductor or P-doped semiconductor. Now, when we join the P-type uh, P and N-type together, we get a p-n junction or p-n junction diode the property of p-n junction we have already learned is it acts as a rectifier that is it allows the current to flow in one direction 
and stops the current from flowing from uh, flowing to opposite direction the diode is our most basic device will not be learning about diode very much in this course this is outside the uh, uh, outside the course content what we are most concerned with in this course is transistors so we have known that there are two types of uh, we are concerned with mosfets and we know there are two types of mosfets nmos and pmos so each mosfet be it nmos or pmos has four terminals gate source drain body in uh, in the mosfets that we buy from store we can see there will be only three terminals gate source and drain there will not be body this is because the body terminal is shorted with the source terminal internally but in actually in actual case there are actually four terminals gate source drain and body in case of nmos the source and the drain are built with n type doping and the body is uh, made with p type substrate so the source and drain are n type and body is p type and we call this an nmos transistor the gate is gate is supposed to be metal because uh, the name suggests metal oxide semiconductor but in general case we use polysilicon gate but metal gates are returning today so yeah, nowadays metal gates are also used but for our topic of discussion we'll be talking talking about polysilicon gates and between the gates and the body gate and the body there is an insulator layer which is actually silicon dioxide which is a very good insulator and this insulator is uh, this insulator is a part of the most part of the most structure metal oxide oxide is the insulator and semiconductor so we can see that here we have a metal in in the gate we have an insulator again the body is conducting as a result we get a capacitor type arrangement in case of mosfets now let us look at how the mosfet op operates when vg uh, we are considering nmos operation first in case of when vg is zero that is the gate is uh, gate voltage is zero there is no voltage in this plate again we consider that our body has been grounded in case of nmos for our operation with nmos we ground the body when that happens we can see that this p layer is grounded and this is also the voltage across this is also zero as a result uh, we know this is a p layer this is an n layer so there is a diode here again this is a p layer this is an n layer there is a diode here and since the p layer is grounded with the body both this diode and this diode are reverse biased since they are reverse biased no current flows from this direction or no current flows in this direction as a result of which actually no current flows in the circuit and as a result this mosfet is turned off now what happens when we apply a gate voltage suppose we apply a positive gate voltage of say 5 volts so here we are connecting the plus terminal of 5 volts and the minus terminal is connected to the ground as a result here we have 5 volts and here we have 0 volts what that creates is this 5 volts or the positive charges will create negative charge layers here. So P, the P type substrate will contain some minority holes, minority electrons. The majority carrier in P type substrate is supposed to be holes, but it will contain some minority electrons. These electrons will be attracted to the surface because of the presence of this gate voltage and when they are attracted to the surface we get this n electron layer over here this layer we can see this is n type and uh, this is n type and this this has a majority of electron this is also n type this also has a majority of electron now if we apply a voltage across drain and source if you plus, put plus up here minus here current will flow from electrons will flow from here to here because electron tends to move to the positive terminal and the holes will move in the opposite direction now one thing is to be noted that before we apply this drain and source voltage no electron will move from here why would that uh, why this is because the gate voltage is applied and this gate voltage is pulling the minority electrons towards the surface and this gate voltage is holding the electrons together when we provide this extra force plus and minus charges that is extra voltage across the drain and source that voltage makes the electrons flow from the n-type source to 
uh, in type A and as a result current is conducted. So we can say when Vg is 0 that is gate voltage is 0 in case of NMOS no current flows through it. So if we consider NMOS as a switch the switch is off. We know in case of switch if no current can flow through it the switch is off. When the Vg is 5 volts current can flow through it because of uh, this channel and the channel of electrons and as a result the switch we can consider the switch is on. One thing is to be noted that in case of NMOS there is a channel of electrons that is N type channel. So this is called N channel MOSFET or NMOS. The case is opposite for here if we look at PMOS the structure is the same there is a source gate drain and body but here the source and drain are highly p doped and the body is n doped as a result again there are two diodes here operational and here the n is connected to vcc it is no the body is no longer connected to the ground in case of pmos the body is connected to the power source or vcc as a result the voltage of n side is more than voltage of p, p side in both the cases when vg is equal to 0 so, uh, sorry, when VG, is, uh, when VG is equal to, say, 5 volt, when VG is equal to 5 volt, the voltage here, uh, here is more than voltage here, and as a result, no current flows through it. But when we decrease the VG to 0, if we decrease the VG to 0, here, we are connecting the v VCC. So, uh, as a result, here, we have 5 volts, and here, we have 0 volts. So, the negative charges, uh, negative charges are here. As a result, in case of N, the minority carriers are actually holes. The holes, uh, this negative part or this zero voltage, it will actually uh, actually attract the holes and as a result, there will be a channel made of holes. One thing is to be noted in both case of uh, NMOS and PMOS, we can see that no charge can flow in this direction ideally. This is because we have a semiconductor layer over here. As a result, this has a capacitive action in this plate there is a negative charge stored and in this plate there is a positive charge or hole stored, uh, stored which is the minority carrier of the body and when these holes are stored if we uh, apply a voltage this time plus in source and minus in drain uh, electrons will again flow from uh, electrons will uh, flow from drain to source and the current actually will flow from source to drain why can it flow from source to drain because there is a positive channel created and in case of p mos transistor that is positive channel mosfets uh, the main carriers are the holes as a result when the holes are holes are transferred from the, here to here the current flows and as and the mosfet is on as a result in case of p mos when we can see that when vg is equal to 0 the switch is off but when sorry when vg is equal to 5 volts the switch is off because here 5 volts here also 5 volts so no charges or no channel is created but when vg is equal to 0 volts a channel is created of holes and as a result the switch is turned on and the switch uh, the current can flow through the circuit we have learned about the basic mosfets uh, in our device course here we see uh, we observe mosfets at switches so we have already seen the IB characteristics of MOSFETs in our device course we were concerned about the saturation region of operation but in this particular case we are concerned about ohmic region because in ohmic region uh, MOSFET acts as a switch. This ohmic region is also called triode region or linear region because the nature here is linear. In this region when whenever the uh, whenever the current and voltage follows this region here it acts as a this ohmic region is the on state of the switch and this cutoff region is considered the off stage of the switch. That is when the MOSFET is in the ohmic region current flows through it. When the MOSFET is in cutoff reg region no current can flow through it. In case of NMOS we have learned in device courses also. In case of NMOS the driving current that is the uh, drain current uh, follows this equation mu n c o x w by l vgs minus vt vds uh, minus Vds square by 2 into 1, uh, 1 plus lambda Vds. This equation, uh, we might not have seen this part in the equation. This is called early effect and this is important. In, uh, this is important and this is actually, uh, and this is 
and no, this is a non-ideal case uh, this comes because of a non-ideal case in general we consider lambda is equal to zero and as a result we see this equation here vds is a drain to source voltage vt is the threshold voltage which is the minimum voltage above which the mosfet turns on vgs is the gate to source voltage w is the width of the mosfet l is the length of the mosfet mu n is a constant parameter and cox is a oxide capacitor in case of PMOS, we see this equation. The equation is almost similar, only we have a magnitude sign here and all the orientation of the voltage or the polarity of the voltage are reversed. For example, here it was VGS gate to source voltage and here we have VSG source to gate voltage. All the expressions are reversed in case of PMOS. Now, power supply voltage plays an important role in case of our design. We have already learned that as we uh, in the previous lecture, as we increase the speed or as we increase the number of transistors, the power decreases. Why does the power decrease? The power supply decreases. In 1980s, the logic le supply level was 5 volts. But now it has decreased. It has decreased by quite a lot. At present, 1 volts or 0.9 volts are also used. In present times, these minuscule MOSFETs, in very tiny MOSFETs, if you provide high VDD such as 5 volts, they may burn up. They are suitable for... Uh, operating in 1 volts or 1.2 volts at such lower voltage. Low voltage indicates more power. So lower voltage saves power. As a result, our circuits are more efficient and small. And when we consider transistor switches, as we have already learned, in case of NMOS, if the gate voltage is zero, the NMOS is off. As a result, no current can flow through it. When the gate voltage is one, that is suppose five volts, that is the logic is one current flows through it. In case of PMOS, when the gate voltage is zero, current flows through it and the switch is on. And when the gate voltage is suppose 5 volts, that is logic 1, no current can flow it and the switch is off. That is when uh, the condition which turns an NMOS on actually turns the PMOS off and vice versa. That is all for today's lecture. Thank you so much. We will be uh, learning about new things in the next lecture.